हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेट स्टार्ट फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ योर जियोग्राफी रिसोर्सेस एंड डेवलपमेंट रिसोर्सेस व्हाट इज रिसोर्स रिसोर्स मींस एनीथिंग और एवरीथिंग लेट अस सी हियर एवरीथिंग अवेलेबल इन आवर एनवायरनमेंट व्हिच कैन बी यूज्ड टू सेटिस्फाई आवर नीड्स एनीथिंग एनीथिंग मींस एनीथिंग व्हिच इज अवेलेबल इन आवर एनवायरनमेंट here they have mentioned can you identify and name the various items used in making life comfortable in our villages and towns when we make our life comfortable we use so many resources which are available in our environment so whatever thing which we are using like air land water rivers mountains minerals resources whatever everything that we all that all are called resources now these resources should be technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable so what does it mean by technologically accessible technologically accessible means technologically that resources should be accessible up to people suppose we required or we are extracting gold the cost of gold is 5000 rupees and the extraction cost is 10000 rupees are you able to understand the cost of gold which is available that is only 5000 but the requirement of amount for extraction of that gold is 10000 so technologically that resource is not accessible that resource should be accessible technologically economically feasible it should be economically affordable to the people also and culturally acceptable there are some resources which our culture does not accept there are some resources which cannot be used so such resources should be technologically accessible like uh, tobacco tobacco is not accept acceptable by so many cultures there are some people those who do not produce tobacco or those who do not consume it also now let us turn towards next part what this figure shows this figure shows human beings interact with nature human beings extract resources that we call raw material raw material from nature and how do we extract that minerals resources with the help of technology with the help of technology we extract that raw material and by using technology we extract that raw material and then we generate institutions we generate some industries we generate some important industries so human beings interact with nature human beings interact with nature with the help of technology and by extracting that raw material we send that to institution we use institutions and convert that raw material convert transform remember this remember this word transform we transform that raw material with the help of technology into resource so this figure is also important let us turn towards next thing the process of transformation of things available in our environment involves an interdependent relationship between nature technology and institutions right now we have studied about this human beings interact with nature as well as technology and we interact with institutions and then we convert that raw material into resource so in that same way here it is mentioned the process of transformation we transform raw material into resource when we extract that material from land that is raw material we convert that into resource so we transform it and we transform it with the interdependence or dependent relationship interdependent relationship between nature technology and institutions dear students we are very well aware we studied that these all resources are free gift of nature but it's not that much easy we require technology we required institutions we required knowledge about nature and then and then only we convert that raw material into resources now these resources are categorized into various types these resources are divided into various types let us see these types here resources are classified on the basis of on the basis of origin on the basis of exhaustibility on the basis of ownership and on the basis of status of development so that we will see next first of all let us see this chart resources natural and human made natural resources and human made resources first of all natural resources renewable and non renewable renewable which we can renew resources 
which can be renewed are called renewable resources and non renewable resources which cannot be renewed renewable resources are divided into two continuous and biological and biological resources are natural and wildlife non renewable recyclable and non recyclable human resources structures and institutions quantity and quality types of resources on the basis of origin first on the basis of origin biotic and abiotic resources biotic resources are obtained from biosphere and have life these are living things and these resources are obtained from biosphere 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 is a combination of atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere atmosphere uh, gases lithosphere soil land hydrosphere water so the combination of these three spheres is called biosphere these are biotic resources living things like human beings flora fauna fisheries and livestock next is abiotic resources non living things all non living things are abiotic resources like rocks and metals now next is resources on the basis of exhaustibility exhaustibility resources which get finished after its use or not if we use the resources and after use are they getting finished or not so these are two types here renewable resource non renewable resources renewable resources are resources which can be renewed or reproduced by physical chemical or mechanical processes aise resource jinko hum dobara bana sakte like solar energy wind energy water forest wildlife these are renewable resources we can renew them next is non renewable its meaning is there in its name only non renewable which cannot be renewed resources which cannot be renewed after its use so what are that resources which cannot be renewed so all fossil fuels fossil fuels are non renewable resources fossil fuels like petroleum coal and natural gas these are non renewable why these are non renewable because these resources take millions of years for its formation long geological time they require millions of years for its formation coal coal required millions of years so these resources fossil fuels are non renewable even minerals also maximum minerals are non renewable now next is on the basis of ownership who is the owner of that resource so on the basis of ownership there are again four types first is individual resource resources which are owned and operated resources which are owned by private individuals are called individual resources example farmers farmers own their own land and their own land is their own resource even in urban area urban people own plot houses and other property plantation pasture land pond and water well this is also individual resource because these resources are obtained or own by individual person even you can see if your father is farmer and your father is having 2 5 10 acres of land so that land is also considered as an individual resource now next is community owned resources community owned resources are resources which are accessible to all people of community accessible means all people of that community can use that resources suppose there are 500 people in a village and that village has grazing ground burial ground pond public park picnic spot and some other things so these all resources are accessible accessible these all resources are open for the people of that village that's why it is called community owned resources now next is national resource national resource resources which are under the supervision of country resources which are belong to the nation so generally technically all resources belong to nation all resources we are just using that resources all resources belong to nation like let us see examples road roads canals railways which are constructed on the field of privately or individually own resources if your land if your farm is used for any cons uh, road construction then that road is called national resource so you understand try to understand all resources technically all resources even our land is also national resource 
if government required government can take that at one particular cost they will offer us particular amount and government can take that resources there is one department urban development authorities this department this uh, uh, institution had has power it is empowered by government to acquire land whenever it is required in a favor of country they can acquire these resources from us all the minerals water resources forest wildlife land these all are also national resources even when we cross the boundaries when we see in ocean and sea 12 nautical miles area in sea from india's coastline is also called national resource let us see here what is nautical mile dear students you see this map in this map you can understand from the coastline of india 12 nautical miles 12 nautical miles 1 nautical mile is equal to 1.85 km so 12 nautical miles is approximately 19 to 20 km so from our border to 20 km this part also comes under national resource whatever resources are available there that will be taken by our country so 12 nautical miles area that also comes under india now next one is international resources international resources international resources are under the custody under the supervision of international institutions from our sea coast or from uh, oceanic resources 200 nautical miles from particular oceanic resources up to 200 nautical miles or beyond 200 beyond 200 nautical miles these resources are there these are exclusive economic zone these resources come under exclusive economic zone so these are international resources next is it is mentioned here that international resources cannot be utilized no individual country can utilize these resources without the permission without the consultation with international institutions so these are international resources now let us turn towards next and the most important category of resources in the last on the basis of status of development what type of developmental status is there of that resources on the basis of that let us see first is potential resource potential resources are those resources which are found in a region but not utilized remember these two words resources which are found in a region we know resources are available but not utilized these are called potential resources one point you can add here that is quantity and quality is unknown it is not mentioned but you can add quantity and quality is unknown that is potential resource its example is rajasthan and gujarat rajasthan and gujarat these two states have enormous potential for development these two states have enormous potential for development of wind and solar energy so wind and solar energy can be generated in rajasthan and gujarat but still it is not used so two point remember two word resources are found but not utilized next is developed resources these are called also called actual resources here we mention one point quantity and quality is unknown here quantity and quality is known and these resources are surveyed survey is done its quantity and quality is known for the use of these resources or the use of these resources depends upon technology and feasibility how these resources are accessible up to people or economically are they feasible or not economically are they available sorry are they affordable or not so developed resources remember two three points these resources are surveyed its quantity and quality is known and these resources uh, the use of these resources depends on technology now next is stock here also you can understand or remember two main points let us see here materials in environment which have the potential to satisfy human needs but human beings do not have pro appropriate technology materials are available in environment but we do not have technology remember these things materials in the environment which have potential there are lot of materials jo hamari zarurat puri kar sakte hain materials in environment have potential to satisfy our needs but we do not have technology that's why it is only considered as a stock two points you need to remember materials are available but we do not have technology 
Its example is mentioned here. Let us see. Its example is water resource. You just see here. Water resource is a compound of two inflammable gases like hydrogen and oxygen. These two gases are available in atmosphere, but we do not have technology to convert these two gases into water. So it is only stock. We are having two gases, but we cannot convert them into water. So it is stock. Now let us turn towards reserve. Reserve is a reserve is a subset of stock. Here you need to remember two points again. Let us see here. Reserve are the subset of stock which can be put into use with the help of existing technical know-how, but their use has not been started. So remember two points: resources are available, but use is not started. Resources are available, but these resources are not used. Why? Because we reserve them for future generation. for next time for the time of crisis we reserve it river water is the example river water we conserve river water we stored to generate hydroelectricity but that river water will be used in future thank you very much